Thin. And once again, uh, it is a hymn, a hymn tune, but uh, that particular tune is also a traditional Welsh folk tune. It's called Talithin, and I've chosen it uh, because the first story I have to tell you is uh, a story about Mice Pandy. And Mice Pandy is uh, a farm between Abergan Olwyn and Talithin. And many, many years ago, uh, there was a family living in Mice Pandy and the wife took the children one day, hot day, nice day like today. She took them uh, to the, the little lake that they had on the farmland. It was known as Llynbach, and I suppose it was known as Llynbach in order to distinguish it from the Llyn Mawr, which uh, would have been Llyn Wingil or Llyn uh, Tal Llyn. And uh, the children were swimming and paddling and probably they had a very nice day, probably a picnic and so on. But before the end of the day, there was a big tragedy because one of the children was drowned, one of the boys. And the great sadness uh, in the whole area, not just the family. Very, very sad time. Anyhow, a few months later, the family started to be haunted by a ghost, well by a poltergeist and uh, this poltergeist was was quite vicious and would throw things around the house and open and close and bang doors and also around outside especially around the, the Llynbach, around the lake there was an eerie feeling and, and, and a coldness. Now then, they tried everything to get rid of this ghost, this poltergeist. They had several priests, vicars, ministers, and they all tried their best to exorcise the, the spirit, the being, but it remained haunting the family. They went to see a Dean Hospice. Now, a Dean Hospice was a very important person in a Welsh community in days gone by. They were thought to possess all knowledge and they had special powers apparently and were able to to get rid of any spells or any bad things that were happening in society the Dean Hospice was the man to go to and there was such a Dean Hospice oh, excuse me one of the perils of living in Dean Hospice There was a Dean Hospice, uh, quite a well-known one, living in Mechenlleth. And he offered 
some advice as to how get how to get rid of the poltergeist, but it didn't work. They also went to the Dean Hespis in Blaine Fist in Yog, but to no avail. And the one in Llanid Lois. But the ghost was still there, this spirit and this coldness and this angry presence amongst them. They failed to get rid of it. And as time went by and it became known in the area that, that no Dean Hespice had been able to get rid of this poltergeist, the gossip started and the suggestions were made that the wife had drowned the son on purpose because you see she was the second wife and the son that was drowned was the son of the first wife and that the second wife had drowned him on purpose in, to ensure that her children would be the heirs to the farm. Now then, I don't know. No one knows what happened, but they, they were still haunted. And so in the end, they had to go all the way down to Cardiff, apparently, so they tell me, all the way down to Cardiff to see if the inhospice there. And they paid a lot of money to this Dean Hespis and they were given some instructions and when they got back home to my Pandy they followed those instructions <clears throat> unfortunately I don't know what they were so I can't tell you but somehow or other they managed to get the spirit the ghost the poltergeist into a small glass bottle. They put a cork to seal the bottle and some wax and some leather which they tied up very tightly. And then they drained Llinbach because Llinbach was, was um, uh, had, had had a dam which they could open and close so that the water could flow out when it was not needed and then they could close the dam and the water could flow back in and form the lake and so they drained Llinbach and they buried the glass bottle containing the, the spirit in the mud and then they placed a stone upon stone upon stone on top of where they had buried the bottle until a huge carnev had been formed, a huge cairn. <clears throat> and then they closed the dam up again and the water flowed and formed Llinbach once again covering the resting place of the ghost. <clears throat> well they were they were quite happy now that the ghost had been laid to rest under Llinbach but apparently the family weren't very happy and various sad things happened to them over the years or so the story goes now when i was a child in african Owen, and, and i remember hearing this story i was always looking out for thin back as i was passing my spandy uh, on my way to dog or back back down to to, to rabbit and I could never see this lake and I was always asking But as an adult I was um, <coughs> reading this book 
it's called i ben ilgan fun and it's a it's a marvelous book it's it's all about the lakes that we have in silveria and in marianisha and uh, it notes all the legends and the stories and the, and the facts about the the uh, the lakes and david gitzo who wrote the book has some knowledge about Llyn y Garnedd, which used to be called Llyn Bach before they built the cairn on top of that glass bottle. And he says that a book was written in 1963 by J.A. Williams called Trem and All. And in that book, he notes that at the end of the 1940s, the farmer who was farming Mice Pandy at the time, Mr. William Jones, whilst opening ditches and draining the land, that he, he knocked down the dam wall. He got rid of the, of the dam and so Llinbach flowed out and never formed again. Um, but the cairn is still there, there apparently. My carnev and Dalanother, the, the carnev, is still there. But I'm not brave enough to go and see if there is a glass bottle underneath it. Are you? I wonder. I wonder. So we were told these quite scary stories, as well as told with take stories, the fairy stories, and and stories funny and, and amusing stories about about Catvan and so on. <clears throat> we were told these scary stories, and I have another one that I remember but it's also I, I've come across it in in this book here and also the Llinbach story the Mice Pandy story is there as well this book is uh, called A Stur on NY uh, the the meanings of place names in the the parishes of Tawin, Llangelynin, Llanegrin, Llanvihangla Pennant, Talathin and Pennell and uh, it's a uh, it, it's a uh, uh, three essays that won uh, first, second and third prize at the Tawin Eisteddfod in 1907. And uh, it, it's very, very interesting because it gives insight into the history and the traditions and the stories and the legends, be they truth or not, about various farms and houses and and um, mountains and rivers and lakes in the Dasani area and the story that I was told as a child was that there were two men who'd been here actually where I live now in in Dinas Maudwe uh, um, Dinas Maudwe used to have uh, very very important um, markets and fairs and so on and these two men had been to Dinas Maudwe to sell horses and they'd had very good prices for their horses and they were walking home now one was the um, the farmer from uh, Tanakoid Isav and the other was the man from Hendre Wallog and uh, both had had a very good day and were very, very tired now and they were approaching Abergynolwyn and they were passing a Vedu just before Abergynolwyn and suddenly the, the man from Tanakoid Isav <clears throat> he had a tightness across his chest and and a feeling and of something not quite right and suddenly he he didn't feel like going home all the way to Tanakoidisa 
it was getting very dark and, and he didn't fancy walking home alone and, and he he told them his friend from Hendra Washog he said oh, don't fancy walking home tonight I've got this strange feeling and, and a tightness and I don't really want to go home and the man from Hendra Washog said well don't worry come come home with me come up come up and stay the night up in Hendra Washog and that's what they decided to do now both of them had a lot of money in their pockets obviously because they they'd sold their horses and as they were walking now then let's get this let's get this straight now as they were walking um up past the pandy up to um, Nant Llwyn Gwern they saw that the man from T Gwyn was sitting there and this was quite strange for him to be there because he and the man from Hendra Wallog had had a big fight and they weren't speaking to each other at all in fact, they couldn't stand each other. But the man from Tigwin, of course, was one of the neighbours of the man from Tanakoidisa. And having seen his neighbour, the man from Tanakoidisa suddenly felt much better. The tightness had gone and, and he felt more relaxed and, and that horrible, strange feeling had disappeared. And so he said to the man from Hendra Wallach, he said, oh, do you know, I think I might as well go home now because my neighbour from Tigwin is here. Mm, said the man from Hendra Wallach, not wanting to say much to the man from Tigwin. And yet he felt it was very odd that he was up there. But the man from Tigwin and the man from Tanakoidisa said good night to the man from Hendra Wallog and the three went home. Now then, just for you to know, the man from Tigwin had intended to kill the man from Hendra Wallog and he knew that he had some money on him because he'd been to Dina Smaulwe. But of course, he couldn't do that now because the man from Tanakoidisa had been with him. So he was quite angry inside. And he started thinking, what if I kill the man from Tanakoidisa? Everyone will think that it's Henry Wallog who did the de bad deed. And do you know that's what he did? He attacked the man from Tanakoidisa and he killed him. And he threw his body, let's get this right now, to the field at Er Eru, the Eru Benlas. And then he took his money and fled back home to Tigwin and went straight to bed. But he couldn't sleep, couldn't sleep at all. He was tossing and turning and of course he felt so guilty and he, he was so sorry about what he'd done. He, 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 couldn't, he couldn't fathom why he'd done it and, and so he was, he was, and then he realised that Maybe they would come after him, but then who would believe him? Would they believe him or Hendra Wallach? And so he fled. He left Tigwin and he thought, I'll, I'll, I'll get to Aberdavi. And he, 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 he found him, himself in Aberdavi and, and he was trying to get a passage over the Davi. He was trying to get a, a boat to take him over the Davi so that he could get to Cardinalshire. But no one 
no one would take him over the dhavi because he had blood on his clothes. And so he fled from Abdavi and he ran up to the hillsides and he didn't know what to do. In the meantime, the poor man from Tanakoidisa, his body had been found. And the man from Hendrewashog got to know about this. And he realised that the man from Tiguin had attacked him, killed him. And that's what he told the authorities. The local community all got together and they went hunting for the man from Tiguin. And they found him up on the hillside. And they brought him home to Tiguin. And they questioned him. And he confessed. He confessed straight away. Now he didn't get to go to court. He didn't get to judge. They condemned him. And they hanged him. They hanged him from the tree outside the door of Teguin. And he was buried on the land, in a field, on the land of Tiguin. And the poor man from Tanakoid, he sat, was buried in the churchyard at Talithin. And those of some of the stories that I was told as a child. <laughs>